Star Wars Vision Season 2 Thoughts. So, uh, yeah, loved every episode so far. Please note when I say some episodes are slow, I mean descriptive, not critical. I don't think that all Star Wars has to move fast. And yeah, these episodes have incredible animation, amazing action, cool concepts. And let's see, that brings us to the first episode of the season, Sith. Ah, there we go. Yes. I know I already said that all these have incredible animation, but I really have to underline for this one, I really love the design of the, the base that the protagonist lives in and paints. She uses her force powers for creativity, not to increase, increase her power or control. Love to see it. And the, the note, the darkness wants to be part of the painting. You know, you may have to integrate the darkness. You can't, it can't only be light. Really love the close-up on the old Sith Master. And, you know, yeah, she has stopped being a Sith. You can leave behind a destructive past. Incredibly important message for young people today, as we're seeing some become de-radicalized from the far right. Really love the use of color in this episode. And the bike she has is incredibly cool, though I guess it's not a bike so much, you know, bike, aka bicycle, as a unicycle. The droid shoots off the head of one of them. Badass. An amazing lightsaber fight. We've seen a lot of light versus dark fights in Star Wars. One could argue that the franchise is basically built around them. This is the first time that it's done through color also. And yeah, the protagonist accepts that darkness is part of her. An important part of becoming an adult is learning to control the darkness that you cannot get rid of in yourself. And yeah, you know, my new favorite episode of the show better than anything in season one, which again I also absolutely loved. Episode two, Screechers Reach. Great shot revealing the rows of beds. We see the factory, which is very metropolis. Really appreciate this episode pointing out how awful it is for, to have child labor. And the kids are very sweet in their sibling dynamic. Holy crap, that cave is spooky. She's behind me, isn't she? Holy crap, that is a terrifying ghost, and she has a lightsaber. The protagonist manages to crush the ghost, and lightsabers the ghost to death. And now it's time to meet. Great twist. I really didn't think that the amulet ever answered her. And, yeah, her friends can't join. And, yeah, being stuck in a terrible situation can make you desperate. Great exploration of that. You know, there's a lot of arguments against going to the cave. <clears throat> Brings us to episode 3, In the Stars. Tachina thinks she can stop the TIE Fighter using the Force. Her sister, Koten, has to rescue her. Considering the story they're telling, it's no wonder they need to deliver some backstory. Doing it as magical cave dust, uh, dust cave painting is an inspired decision. And, yeah, let's see, out of the water, struggle over the oar, Tichina is certain that she's ready. It is very difficult being a child, feeling like people aren't letting you, think, letting you do things that you are ready for. I appreciate how threatening and ominous they make the factory seem as Koten goes to get water. And Tichina went in, so Koten has to help rescue her, but she keeps insisting she can beat them. The resources of this planet belong to the Empire. And, yeah, right now, in real life, resources are being taken or destroyed, though indigenous people, as the two sisters are very clearly coded, need them to survive, so extremely relevant. Really love to see it. Throw her. I gotta say, for a few seconds there, I did honestly think Koten would not be able to rescue her in time. Even though, like, okay, it's it's Disney, it's an, it's Star Wars, it's animation, freaking... You know, to be clear, I'm not saying kids never die in Star Wars, but... No, there's... Yeah. And using the Force, she does manage to save her. Together, they use the Force against the Empire, including the ATST. 
and they release all the water and at the end the stars are visible again allowing them to connect directly with the mother again just yeah great to you know environmentalism has always been part of star wars star wars is a world where <clears throat> the empire and other evil take resources and you know yeah destroy things to wage war whereas the the good guys are usually closer to nature in in some way or another you know with ewoks it becomes explicit so so yeah um i'm really glad to see an entire episode devoted to that yes i realize technically they're shorts i'm gonna call them episodes easier to keep track of episode four i am your mother an episode that doesn't have anything to do with the force or lightsabers i appreciate that and we open on an ad for the family race which Antilles is very cool by far the closest we've gotten to canon so far love seeing claymation so glad that it's still being done at least some like it just has a charm to it that is unmatched by traditional animation or CG and their droid is like a dog when Annie was a kid she loved them flying together you know it's that thing of now she wants to be she uh, she wants more independence important part of growing up we keep thinking that Annie's mom has figured it out but she just wants to give a hug and make sure Annie remembered her lunch very sweet and Wedge sells merch uncommon Star Wars occurrence very common real life occurrence and they do a great job making us despise the bully Julan from right away holy crap even baby Wookiees rip people's arms off if they're upset Annie's mom shows up with her lunch, embarrassing her. It looked like she might get into a fight with Jalan for Jalan mocking the ship. And she misunderstands a young person's use of sarcasm, interpreting as being genuine, a very parent thing to do. You are embarrassing. Don't say that. And basically because she's lower class, the upper class think less of her and she gets to prove that she's as good if not better than the upper class <laughs> I kinda love that Jelana has a miniature Death Star to attack other racers really love the race I got very emotionally invested I wasn't surprised that Annie and her mom won and Jelan didn't because I've seen this type of story before but it was still really satisfying and yeah really loved seeing Annie and her mom reconnect and yeah you know it's a, another case where I really the though it was a story about a race you know I still really connected with it so it is possible for Star Wars to do that of course I'm embarrassing I'm your mother it is important to communicate to young people that truth and episode 5 journey to the dark head turtle power Amazing shot when they first fly for the mission, including going to hyperspace. Wow, Toll and Ara really do not get along. Very cool lightsaber fighting. I appreciate that it's made to look very distinct and different. The mission doesn't succeed, but it's not hopeless. And at the end, they still really don't get along. And episode 6, The Spy Dancer. Amazing reflection in the water puddle. The abuse against the droid immediately makes us hate the troopers if we didn't already. It makes it all the more satisfying when the droids help fight back at the end. In the end. So the good guy characters here all have French accents and name, names and traits. So this appears to be inspired by the heroism of French resistance members. I really appreciate this kind of thing. It can help lead Americans to empathize more with the French. The French are not a minority. You're allowed to dislike them. But a lot of Americans don't even think about why they don't like the French. Stunning dance moves. And some of the stormtroopers are definitely women. Very cool. A lot of women can fight as well as many men can. Let's see. And I, I do kind of love when it's it's hilarious when misogynists, you know, they're, they're all about, oh, women are awful. But then the moment that they see 
a female character, uh, you know, that's like evil or at least morally, like you know, maybe an anti-hero or something. They're like, "What? You can't do that." Well, which is it? And you know, there are women who uphold the patriarchy, so I think it makes sense to have female stormtroopers. And let's see. She recognizes the cane and symbol. It's so overwhelming that she loses her balance, though they do manage to to make it look like she meant to do that. It's the only way I can be free. So Loie goes from thinking the officer is the man who stole her baby and and you know wanting to kill him, which is the kind of thing that some fascists have done to realizing it must be the baby grown up. And he is in conflict about whether or not to follow the Empire. Very emotional. Really love whenever one of these stories, animated stories, goes all Terminator with one of the droids. And that happens here with both animation and score. With the droid that, like, you know, picks up another end, just rips it in half. And, you know, climbs to try to get to Loey. Just, yeah, really love it. And this episode helps underline how important Grace and Spycraft can be in war, you know, she gets much closer to all these stormtroopers than, you know, like any any of the, you know, I love Luke and Leia, Han and and you know, Chewie and such. None of them would be able to do this. And that's you know, if you're if you're going to continue telling new stories, you should give us something we haven't seen before. And episode, that brings us to episode 7, The Bandits of Gorlock. So the characters here are coded as South Asian. It feels like it's a partition story or heavily inspired by such. They're leaving their home for an unknown new land. She feels severely uprooted. He is feeling like he should have fought harder either before or instead of leaving. And they are on a train. Charuk is going to get her something to eat, but she wants the flute so badly that she uses the force and it's seen. Stormtroopers are going to arrest her, so he lures them to chase him instead. Love the vibrant colors of this episode. She helps him get back into the train just before they hit the tunnel. Quite literally. Before he hits the tunnel. I love how much this episode immerses us in the Southeast, Southeast Asian culture. The, the clothes, myths, food, uh, colors. And obviously, which would be more if it was longer, as is the case with the Miss Marvel miniseries. But it's still great. Inquisitor, and he burned the farmer villages, leaving no survivors. Rugal uses the Force, reveals she wields twin lightsabers. Very cool. And at the very end of the episode, when he realizes there's no way they're going together, he uses the game to make her feel safe about going with Rugal. Very, very sweet. It might be... That was one of the most emotionally affecting episodes for me. Which brings us into episode 8, The Pit. So yeah, we see the prisoners are slaves, something actually happening in America and other parts of the world, so extremely relevant. I really love the brief montages where we see a lot of time pass, uh, you know, in a, in a short amount of screen time. I forget what it's called. We see how the city is built by the kyber crystals that they mine. Let's see. And once they reach the bottom, the slaves are uncuffed, but they are left, you know, they're abandoned down there to follow the light. And they get a chant going, Crook starts to climb up, almost falls, but the crocodile thing helps. Now to return to Gotham. And back in the city, no one will listen to Crux at first. Sadly, accurate, something we need to get better at. When he climbs onto the building, they do listen. The kyber crystals for the city were mined by us, not the Empire. Which, you know, it's it's very true. Like, slaves are not allowed the fruits of their labor. And, you know, the people, keep the, the slave owners will take credit for the work of the slaves. As if, you know, cracking a whip is particularly difficult to do. It's the slaves doing the hard work. And the stormtroopers throw him into the pit. I really, really, you know, very upsetting. And I appreciate that they found a way. You know, obviously they weren't going to show him land and, like, just completely get destroyed. 
but you know we still feel the weight of it follow the light and they do I really love the look of the stormtroopers here it reminds me somewhat of you know in, in the animatrix there's a couple of episodes where they the the what's it called the the agents are are depicted very differently I feel like the one that's about the race I think it's called world record I feel like that pushed it slightly too far you know I, I remember seeing a reviewer say they look like astronauts or something and it's kinda true I, I I feel like that was pushing a little too far I think this is a good alternative you know they they definitely look at least somewhat different but the, it, yeah and the citizens push past the stormtroopers I gotta say when when they like look into the pit and everyone's like we're being saved and then they retreat like oh I was just holy crap it was it was a huge relief when it turned out no, no no they're not they're not leaving they're not abandoning them they just now that they know you know they're they sent the ship kind of thing yeah but but yeah the citizens save the slaves incredibly important story to tell today you know the the it's more direct than is perhaps particularly realistic for a lot of us to do but you know yeah what what we need to do is more like political organizing it's not literally going to a place and making sure to free slaves just like that but you know it's star wars it's fiction it, you know Famously, a lot of us are not crazy about a lot of politics in Star Wars. And that brings us to the last episode of the season, episode 9, Ow's Song. And, yeah, I'm slightly torn on the opening. I feel like it wasn't necessary with all the text, and I know it's, you know, yeah, I it's just... I get that doing it in animation instead of text would have made it very different and that wasn't what they wanted. I don't know if it was completely necessary to tell us all that up front. Yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's it's pretty clear from, from right away. Um... Yeah, I uh, Kratu, I think. Oh, Cynthia Rivo, very cool, very very cool. I'm, I'm, yeah, quite quite like her, but but yeah, it's very clear from right away she's definitely a, a Jedi. So, but but yeah, you know, she realizes that, Ow, you know, oh, the the voice actor who does the, you know, the normal voice for Ow and the one who does the singing, that's two different actors. That makes a lot of sense there. So it, it can be very, very difficult to find an actor who can sing really, really well and a great singer who can act really, really well. But but yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, she, you know, she realizes they call to you. To mine, Kyber is our calling. If I could, then I would. And Ao puts one of those helmets on which means she graduates from being a minor to being a minor. And I got to say, I'm not crazy about the fact that Ao falls almost as much as Kaz does, but at least it's not played for laughs as much. And yeah, you know, she, she sings and it starts to turn the crystals, but when she stopped by Abat, and, and pulled up, you know, starts, the, the, the Sith crystals start to, yeah, react very negatively, having not yet completely been turned back into Jedi crystals, and <clears throat> this is another of the episodes, it happens a lot on the show, where an adult will try to stop a kid from doing something and the kid is in the right. Like I mentioned earlier, I think it's extremely important that we listen to children. You know, I don't know if I love... I mean, at the, I guess at the end of the day, you know, Star Wars is like, you shouldn't be going around blowing up, 
the buildings that, you know, like if you actually know where there is the, the real life equivalent to a Death Star, probably don't go try to, you know, destroy it in person, you know, so the, yeah, I guess it's, yeah, fair enough. And the, I do really appreciate that these episodes do also show that once they get the the chance to the the older siblings and parents and such do tend to listen you know once they see clear evidence that the kid is right you know i'm i i don't think i need to ever again in my entire life see another piece of media where like parents and older siblings are just like completely unreasonable like no matter how reasonable what the 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 younger one is is saying they're still gonna be like nope you know it's just like i get it i get that for a number of kids it feels like that it feels like no matter what they'll never be reasonable i just don't think yeah like when i was a kid watching those it didn't make me feel like oh you know that happens to everyone it kind of just made me feel so it's just always going to happen then you know it kind of made me feel hopeless if i had watched this show when i was a kid yeah it would have given me hope and let's see. yeah the the, at the yeah at the end you know ao is you know, yeah, helps with the, so, so, yeah, and over the credits, we get more of Ao's singing, it's good, I, I prefer her earlier work, I just feel like the, the new stuff is a little too commercial, you know, just, it's not quite the same, and, yeah, so, I've seen a number of people say the second season focuses too much on female leads, and you know it it seems to me it's it's driven by a strong urge to communicate that women are people should be listened to which sadly a lot of misogynists do not believe currently and yes i acknowledge that disney the company the people running disney probably don't believe that they just know that a lot of young people believe that so they agreed to make these stories what i'm saying is a lot of the people, you know, hired to do these stories, it feels genuine that they believe it. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, it's possible that this important cause could lead to less varied stories. I don't really think it did here. Like, I, I don't understand why it's, it's plenty varied. As long as the lead is a white guy who straight and cis... English is his first language, but the moment that you get several women, it's like, ah, just, there's no, there's just a complete lack of variety, you know, it's just, dude, they, the women, like, hypothetically, make up, like, 50%, like, anyway, but, but, yeah, I really don't think that that is a thing that happened here, but, yeah, that brings us to the ranking, and, yeah, um, you know, resist the the it's so yeah worst to best resistance season one is at the very bottom resistance season two right above that. Other than that, yeah, each of these shows tops the the rest. Whether we're talking the overall season, the season finale, or the season opener, yeah, for for sure the the yeah these it's just absolutely amazing. So really really glad that I ended up deciding to. To watch them and and you know in case you haven't watched the other videos where I talk about it to be clear I never worried that they were bad I've always held anime in great regard I was just worried that I lacked the experience with anime to to be able to fully appreciate them but yeah that is it for this video so next week is going to be the second season, the my thoughts on the second season of the Bad Batch. Week after that, uh, thoughts on season one of Tales of the Jedi. Week after that, thoughts on season one of Young Jedi Adventures. 
and then I am completely caught up and then it is time for more Marvel shows so yeah uh, let's see right um, yeah more videos to come this week you know gonna be covering Secret Invasion gonna do if all goes well two movies uh, one episode of Scream Queens two episodes of The Bear so yeah May the force be with you.